So this was an official video from the 2015 um, DARPA Robotics Challenge. Now, objectively speaking, we saw a number of humanoid robots who tried to do normal human tasks like walking, opening a door or getting out of a car, but they failed. Now, people usually um, have a different kind of experience. They are empathizing with these robots. They might even feel sorry for them. Now, I've been working with uh, um, uh, robots now for more than 20 years, and my background is in biology and natural sciences, but as soon as I moved into robotics, I realized that there's a fundamental differences in the nature of robots and people or biological organisms. So this is just a picture of a robot that I uh, did quite early in my career. Um, these days I'm working with uh, quite complex machines back at University of Hertfordshire in our robot house. We develop um, technology that can help people, older people, to live independently for longer in their own homes. So people who can normally still do most things but might have some problems with physical tasks or with cognitive tasks. So this is one of the robots we work with. Uh, this is an, another robot, so these robots are social, people interact with them, and the robots can, for example, fetch objects for them or remind them to take medicine or can remind them of um, appointments. Now, for me, robots are machines. If they break, we fix them or we replace them. And when our work is done, we switch them off. I don't feel guilty about that. But most people are yeah, most people have a different attitude towards robots. They very easily empathize with them or treat them as if they were creatures, little animals or even people. And that's the topic of my talk um, where I'm questioning a little bit why is that so? Why do we have this, uh, this reaction? So in many debates, robots are being compared with people. For example, just recently, literally, I think a couple of weeks ago, um, European uh, members of parliament uh, voted to give uh, robots uh, a legal status as electronic persons with rights and regulations. Now it is very important to have discussions on legal, ethical and social, such social issues, but these discussions usually only point out one trajectory of the future of robotics, namely to make these robots more and more humanoid and more and more human-like in their behavior and their appearance and their intelligence. For example, what you see on the right here is an android built by Hiroshi Ishiguro in Japan in his own, own image. So let me first explore a little bit why are people interested in viewing robots as, as creatures? Why do they empathize with them? First of all, we have a deep-rooted desire to imitate nature, starting with uh, um, cave paintings, uh, depicting uh, animals, depicting people. Um, later in ancient Greek and ancient Egypt, for example, uh, people were very interested in building uh, statues that could seemingly move as if they were alive, using basic technology that they had at the time, namely ropes and water and fire. Uh, in the 18th and 19th century, for example, here in Europe, you had inventors building uh, um, uh, uh, so-called mechanical automata, basically based on clockwork technology that was available at that time. So these were animal-like uh, automata that could uh, replicate these movements, some of the movements of the animals, or they looked human-like, like what you see in the, in the middle of, of the slide. And these human-like automata, they replicated human behavior, such as writing, um, uh, dancing or playing musical instruments. Now these days we have a different level of technology, we have a lot of computer and robotics technology, but something similar is happening. We are interested in replicate, imitating nature in order building robots in our own image and make them do things, make them do tasks um, that are human-like, although you saw in the initial video that they may fail at doing that. So there's also the way in how we interpret seemingly intentional movements. So this is a video from a study from 1944 done by two psychologists called Haider and Zimmer. What they did is they showed this video to a group of people and with no other instructions and just afterwards asked them, please write down what you saw. That was it. Now, what you do see, objectively speaking, are geometrical shapes, two triangles, a big one and a small one, and a circle. And they move around and 
in and out of another geometrical shape. But this is not what most people said. <laughs> they talked about agents, they talked about intentions, they talked about, oh, this little triangle is trying to sneaking up on the other ones. They, they talked about these geometrical shapes chasing each, each other, having goals hiding from each, each other. So, <laughs> We just can't help interpreting it seemingly intentional movements in this way, in a human-like way, in a creature-like way. It is also, um, uh, Jerome Bruner, another psychologist, has said uh, and written many, many times that how we interpret and how we make sense of the world is in terms of narratives, narratives with intentional agents. And that's something we also apply to uh, to robots. Now, why was it important for our ancestors to have this acute sense of recognizing intentional movement? Well, it was very important to distinguish intentional movement from movements caused by physical processes, for example, clouds moving in the sky, which don't pose, which don't, uh, pose any immediate threat. But it's important to recognize creatures, because creatures can be either predators or prey or mates. So we are tuned, we, we are biologically tuned in recognizing intentional uh, movements. And that the same ap ap applies to robots. So here's a, here's a little mobile robot. And uh, y you know, the way how we interpret, the way how, how we view this is that we automatically wonder, what is this robot up to? What is it actually doing? You know, it must be doing something. Um, but this type of behavior, um, and our reactions to the robots, it doesn't make these robots more human-like. It doesn't make them creatures. There's a fundamental difference between living things and robots. Robots are machines. They are made by us. Any robot is more similar to my smartphone or my toaster than it is to you or me. Now, another aspect that influences how we view robots is their design. This is uh, the Paro robot uh, designed by Takanori Shibata in Japan. It has been used for many years successfully in homes for elderly people and people with dementia. Um, its design is based on a baby seal robot using this baby schema with uh, a, a big head and big, big eyes. Um, the same is used in uh, you know, c cartoon figures to make things look cute. Real baby seals are cute, and so, so is this uh, baby robot. Um, that's how it is being perceived. It has been designed with that purpose. There is no other purpose to it rather than interact with people, to motivate them, to engage them, to also motivate them to interact with other residents in the home. So this robot is an example that you can, without uh, building a humanoid robot, you can find an application where robots of other shapes can very successfully be used in a particular application area. Um, more recently, we find these very abstract shapes, these more robot-like devices that you can communicate with, like Amazon Echo, which is, again, an example. You can have something that is absolutely not human-like, um, but it can provide useful services in a particular area. Now, we also have an example of a humanoid robot called Casper that shows the benefit if you introduce a robot specifically as a machine, not pretending that it is human-like. Casper has been designed to interact specifically with children with autism. It doesn't look pretty, that's what people tell me, but the reason is it has been designed for a very particular purpose. It has the face, for example, has realistic human-like features, but very much simplified to help children with autism because they are often overwhelmed by the complexity of human interaction and communication. With the robot, on the other hand, they can, in their own time, explore interaction. If they, for example, hit the robot, then the robot will react in a way that will show the child what the consequences are of his or her own, own actions, and then a teacher or a parent can use it as a as an example to discuss what is socially appropriate touch, why is it bad to hit somebody. You could not do that with a, with a human being, and not even with a robot where people think it is a human. But you can do it with a robot that's specifically introduced as a, as a machine. So we treat robots as creatures and humanoid robots very often as if they, that they were human and there's nothing wrong with that. This is how we are, this is how, how I, our body works, how our brain works, how we perceive and interpret the world. 
However, we must be um, aware of the fundamental differences between biological and artificial uh, uh, systems. Humans have an evolutionary and developmental history. We are born into a society where we grow up as social beings and we learn about the world and ourselves through interactions with other people. Robots have nothing like that. They don't have uh, bones, they don't have blood, they don't have any genuine emotions. So we need to be very clear, even if we treat robots socially, if we treat them like creatures or in a human-like way, we need to be aware that this treatment doesn't change the nature of what they are. They are machines. They are not, not people. So the question is now, do we limit our imagination to this one possible trajectory of the future of robotics that goes into ever more human-like systems? Or do we, on the, one, on the other hand, broaden our imagination and say, well, there may be many, many possible futures. Let's just imagine different roles that robots can play usefully in our society where they fulfill certain roles. And let's just match these roles with specific robot designs and the way in how they look, how they behave and how intelligent they are. So these mappings, they should determine uh, the future of robotics. Robots are not people, but it is up to us to decide what they may become. Thank you. <laughs>